Hi, I'm Brenda Buglione, and welcome to an all new episode of Snow Motion. This week, we ride up the chairlift with Olympic silver medalist, Ryan Cochran Siegel, and show you how to ski better in spring conditions with AJ Guinness. Later, we'll take a sneak peek at Peekaboo, the documentary featuring legendary alpine skiing star, Peekaboo Street, and share more ski and fitness tips along the way. Winter is not over yet, so let's get started. We're athletes and athletic trainers. We know how important staying active is to you. We're physicians and scientists. Our groundbreaking research is helping you heal faster. We're the Stedman Clinic and Stedman Philippon Research Institute. And we're your destination for personalized orthopedic care. Personalized orthopedic care. Treating Team USA. And the athlete in all of us. Bell, make it gold. Snow Motion is brought to you by the Stedman Clinic, treating Team USA and the athlete in all of us. And by Gorsuch. Before he won the silver in the Beijing Olympics, US ski team racer Ryan Cochran Siegel rode up the chairlift with us and talked about his family's famous skiing routes and their homegrown ski hill in Vermont. Today's chairlift interview is with Ryan Cochran Siegel, U.S. ski team member and Olympian. Ryan, you had a big breakthrough year last year. What came together? I think just trust in my own skiing. Um, definitely having a love for the sport and um, embracing the challenges, but I think I definitely kind of allowed myself to go out there on race day and just ski how I want to ski. You want to be successful and do well in your sport, but it doesn't define you. you don't, you're not going to be happy or sad. I mean, you were going to be happy when you do well, but you're not going to... Yeah, it's not fulfilling if all you're doing is chasing results. There has to be more than that. Um, and I think, too, we all recognize there will come a day when you know ski, our ski racing career has to end and we have to move on with our lives. And I think understanding having a greater purpose than just you know trying to win a race, um, it can carry on beyond the skiing. You won a World Cup. Yeah. That's wild. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very special moment. Um, I think as a ski racer, you dream of. I mean, obviously being on the top step and to be able to do it on the world stage was phenomenal. Ryan Cochran Siegel, a flourish at the finish in Bormio and in the first place. You had a bad injury last year at Kitzbühel. Mm -hmm. I mean, you fractured your neck. Mm -hmm. You're back on snow training, and how do you feel? I feel 100%. Um, in terms of you know my body and that health, I think there there will be moments um, just getting back in the starting gate, getting used to racing at an elite level again that uh, will take some time. But I trust you know that I am a good skier and, and I've been able to you know come back and, and work hard to get to that top step, and I really want to get back there. You've done it before, right? Yeah. With the, your knee. Yeah, yeah. And um, you so you know what it takes. So you have a lot of um, sponsors behind you, which is great. Tell me about the one on your hat. So this is Alpe Cimbra. Um, it's a just a ski resort in kind of northern Italy. Um, and they are awesome, so supportive of our team, creating incredible and training environments between watering the slopes, building up terrain, um, whatever we need. 
I recently partnered with Alps and Meters. Um, it's a clothing sponsor, kind of. Um, they're breaking into uh, winter sportswear, so it's been a fun process and getting to know uh, the team involved with that and, and trying to create really high quality garments. Wow, that's great. Ryan, in preparation for this interview, I watched a lot about your family ski area. That is just wild. I can't believe your grandpa and grandma started this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the reason why I'm here today. Um, my grandfather had a vision of you know, building a small ski area in his backyard and that's what he was able to do. And that's the reason why my mom and her, her three siblings were able to have so much success as ski racers, but also why our community has been so involved with skiing in general. So your grandfather was an engineer and in 1960 he built a rope tow in, the, yeah. in your backyard, yeah. like really close to your house. Yeah. And your mom and her, and her brothers and sisters were able to ski and when he got home it talks about the turning on lights and yeah. them skiing every night yeah and yeah. it's it's not a big hill at all so um the house is still there and they won a gold medal yeah uh from yeah. this hill okay yeah, for training it's wild. Them. um but yeah just like a hometown little ski area that my grandfather was able to build and um built the rope toe himself i think took an old car engine or, or a tractor engine i'm not sure which and made it run into a rope toe installed some lights on the house that shined on the hill and um, from that, just created an environment that really allowed for some, some excellent skiing. Well, I just think about what a nice family and that you, they opened up their kitchen for the warming hut yeah. for everyone to go in and yeah. let all the kids learn to ski and talk them and yeah. I mean, aren't you just proud? <laughs> it's a legacy. It is. And it's, so, it's such a special place too. Um, I mean, that's really where I grew up. and. Obviously, I learned how to ski, and, and it's been f very fulfilling for me. But I also, I think, learned about you know the values of community and um, how just to raise quality people. Um, you know, we're not we're not there trying to make a buck. We're definitely there trying to pass along the love of, of skiing to as many people as we can. Cochran Ski Area in Richmond, Vermont. It's just off I-89. 20 minutes away from Burlington, so um, close to the whole Champlain Valley. We try to make it as affordable as possible, and if that's still out of reach, then um, we make it even more affordable and free for you. So we do what you can to, to be introduced Aww. to skiing, and just so that you can find the same love that we have. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. There are certain opportunities that I can go back, and whether it's you know running the rope tow or helping groom or um, just you know being on the hill and running gates with the other club kids. I think it's a, it's a cool experience to just try to be there and find a way to give back. Ryan, well, we're all cheering for you. Good luck this year. Thank you. Kill it, but stay safe. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Ryan Cocker Siegel heading out right now. Coming up, we'll share tips to help you ski in the spring corn snow and the steeps. And then we'll look at a film that chronicles Peekaboo Street's life and ski racing career. What we've done at Surefoot is really changed the way that you get ski boots. The sun shines bright. This boot is made for your foot. As the difference is amazing. You'll ski light. better. They're better fitting, better skiing than anything you've ever experienced. I woke up feeling great. Today was made for me. And life is good the way it should the way.
for all my latest ski tips and chairlift interviews. Subscribe to Snow Motion on YouTube and follow me on Instagram at Brenda Buglione One and on Facebook at Brenda Buglione. My favorite, favorite ski conditions is skiing powder. My second favorite is skiing corn snow in the springtime. I think you ski both of those conditions very similarly. I, I'd say so. Unlike icy or conditions, harder conditions, we want a little more pressure on the outside ski. I think in these conditions, you're skiing a little more two-footed, less power, but still allowing the skis to do their thing. I totally agree, because if I had all my weight on my downhill ski and my uphill ski was light, it could catch in these clumps of corn and clumps of powder. So I want to have a little more weight on both skis versus all my weight on my downhill ski. I agree completely. So you're saying don't get in such an angulated position. I, you can get in an angulated position, it's just not going to happen as fast. Yeah. You know, on the icier conditions and the harder conditions, you're you going to put a lot of pressure in the ski versus here, you just kind of let the ski do its thing. And then when it's really biting, that's when you make the angulation and go. Yeah. Okay, the other important part of skiing corn snow is looking ahead because there's so many clumps and heavy parts and ice chunks and it's just it's really variable conditions but it's playful too because you're looking ahead and you can make a smooth turn on that little smooth part of the snow and then jump the clump and you just got you got to be on it like you said just playful keeping your head on the swivel and keep going <laughs> <laughs> okay and also number three so that was one too but I think I think um, you know staying in balance you don't want to be back and you don't want to be too far forward because your tips can dig in. You want to be right in the center of your ski. Well said, Brenda. Oh, thank you, AJ. <laughs> okay, let's review three tips on skiing corn snow in the springtime. You need a little more two-footed. You want to have pressure on both your skis so nothing little catches and you want to be smooth in the snow. Smooth, it's really about being smooth. Exactly. Okay, number two, I'm looking ahead because I want to not hit that clump of snow and so just really looking ahead uh, and knowing where I'm going. Watching where you're going to put your pressure and make sure you're going where you're going. The third tip is being centered on your skis. Not too far back, not too far forward, but right in the athletic position. Exactly. And the pole plant always helps. Oh yeah, always. The pole <laughs> plant always helps. Okay, let's go ski. Let's go. If you can keep up. Yeah. <laughs> From a tiny town in Idaho to Olympic glory, Peekaboo Street inspired an entire generation of American skiers. Her incredible story is told in a new film, Peekaboo. You can stream it now on Peacock. Over a second ahead of anybody else, Peekaboo Street. An amazing American with an unusual name. People ask me, what are you thinking when you're going that fast? And I said, I'm thinking about how I can go faster. That's exactly what happened. My father just tried to attack me in my own house. It was very, very dramatic. Peekaboo put ski racing back on the map. That will be gold for Peekaboo Street. Today I'm going to teach you how to have edge control down any steep slope. Here I was skiing down the mountain and I encountered this very steep pitch. I know a lot of skiers would be afraid and their tendency is to turn away from the steeps thinking this is gonna slow them down. But actually, this isn't gonna slow you down. That makes them slide. The only way to have a solid edge set is to counter the forces on that ski. If I bring my hip out of position, my ski flattens out and I lose edge control. If you stay in your athletic position with your shins driving against the tongue of the boot, your knees bent, your hands in front, looking down the hill, you'll be able to maintain that edge control, carve your turns, and it's not gonna be difficult. You can do it. At the Stedman Clinic and Stedman Philippon Research Institute, we know every athlete is built differently. That's why we've studied sports injuries in women for over two decades, developing the most effective treatments and prevention protocols specifically for women. All to get you back to the activities you love 
sooner. The Stedman Clinic and Stedman Philippon Research Institute, the future of sports medicine, is here. If we want to protect the places we love, we must vote. America is a nation of many nations, many histories, many experiences. But despite our different paths, we all converged here. You see, our common ground is the land itself, our playgrounds, and places we love. Now we must protect them from the effects of climate change. If you love the land, make a plan to vote this November. Start your plan at makeadamplan.org. Spiders, big spiders, big, big spiders. Sharks, by far, nothing else is even in the same realm. Butterflies. I, I just see one coming at me and I like, want to run. It's just it's so scary. Probably lack of snowfall is my biggest fear. Because without snow, I, I don't know what I would do. Yeah. Snow Motion is brought to you by Surefoot. Better fitting, better skiing. And by Hester Gloves, quality craftsmanship since 1936. Welcome back to Snow Motion. While building strong legs for skiing, it's essential to balance quad strength with hamstring exercises. Here's a deadlift variation that will help you build complete lower body strength. I'm with Chris Neural, athletic trainer and strength and conditioning specialist. Chris, we always talk about having strong legs for skiing, but I know that the hamstring has to be strong as well. Give us an exercise to strengthen our hamstring. All right, so for new, it's called a B stance RDL. B stance is just going to be the position we're in. RDL stands for Romanian deadlift, right? So we've got a light kettlebell here. We're not going to start with this yet, right? But we're going to upgrade to it. So the first thing I want you to do, let's go ahead and kind of stand facing this way. All right, let's put all the weight into that left leg. Okay, now you're gonna put your hands out, like you got a tray of food, that you're gonna take to your loved ones in bed, right? I do that. All the time, of course. All right, so how do you shut the door behind you? You Ooh, like that. push your butt back to okay. shut the door, right? So you boop the door, all right? So all we're doing is pushing back, feeling that in that left hamstring, and then coming back up. And the reason that we're doing this with skiers a lot of times when we work with skiers, we see um, an overdominance of that quad, right? And so we want to balance that out by focusing on that hamstring to offset that imbalance. Let's try the other leg. Yeah, look at that form, beautiful. All right, so now we're going right leg forward. Left leg is slightly out the back, soft right knee. Your arms are just gonna be ropes, right? So I don't want any tension in those, you're just letting them hang. Drive your hips back towards the wall behind you. Feel that hamstring pull on that right side and come back up. Very good. This is an easier version of a single leg RDL, right? It helps protect the back a little bit more and get you in better position. So really what I'm concentrating on is driving my hips back. You, correct, you only go as far down with that kettlebell as your hips can go back. So as soon as those hips stop moving backwards, that's as low as you go. Look good. This is really working. My hamstring is really working. If you're not feeling it in the hamstring, shorten up that angle at the knee. So instead of bending it quite as much, just stick with a little bit higher angle and push back. And you'll feel that more in the oh hamstring. Boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Brenda's got pretty good hamstrings going on here. So she's got pretty good range of motion. Okay, it's burning right here. Just letting, just letting it down. It's working? Good. All right, give me one more. Drive the hips back, lower the weight. Very good. That's a great hamstring. Why are the hamstrings so important? So if you get too much dominance in these quads and the quads keep getting bigger and bigger, you get imbalance between your hamstrings and your quads and that sets you up for injury. That's what the weight room is all about, is creating balance. So we're offsetting those movement deficiencies that we create while participating in our sport. Okay, so we gotta do our hamstring exercises, everyone. We gotta do them. They may not be fun, but they're important. Thanks, Chris. A 13-year-old boy named Sam overcomes climate change anxiety and finds hope by skiing weekly 
with activist, filmmaker, and pro skier, Mike Douglas. Find the full film, Sam and Me, on Solomon TV's YouTube channel. As winter approached, I suggested that we try to ski together once a week and talk about skiing and climate change and just stuff. I wanted to see if I could pass along some of the lessons that I've learned through my experience to help him ease some of his fears and, and, and just get into a better headspace. Before the chairlift started turning, I asked Sam to set some goals for the winter, both on the skiing side and on the climate side. If this thing was gonna work, we needed something to aim for. Yeah, the goals I have for this season, I really want a 360 um, because I can't do it yet and all my friends can do it. Another thing that I wanna get more confident on at least is skiing steep stuff, because if I think about it for too long, I generally tend to chicken out. We have a school project where we're meant to create a social change. So I was thinking we could do a climate march in Pemberton for that project. I think a good like, final goal is to ski something pretty gnarly, like maybe something like DOA, something like that. DOA is this big chute off the peak of Blackcomb. I think it's about, I don't know, how wide is it? DOA is this rock line couloir that comes off the summit of Blackcomb Mountain. It's about an hour's hike above the resort and it's narrow and steep. And I don't think very many 13 year olds have ever skied it. Unlike Sam, I didn't grow up thinking about climate change. I've never considered myself an environmentalist or an activist. I'm a skier. My whole life has been viewed through the lens of this sport. You know, everything I know about climate change and the environment has been validated through travel and time in the mountains. And I think that's given me a perspective on things that, that probably not too many people have. I've been worried about climate change for a while now. For many years, I, I thought the government was gonna do something about it, but here we are. My success in skiing has given me a platform. It's not a huge one, but it's a platform nevertheless. A few years ago, I got fed up with the lack of action I saw being taken on the climate crisis, and I thought, I wanna use my platform to try and make some positive change. You know, hope, Hope requires action. If not us, then who? And if not now, then when? Before we got to work on Sam's goals, I wanted to take him to the spot where I first saw climate change happening, the Horseman Glacier on Blackcomb Mountain. Back when I started, back in 1988, this whole bowl here was full. It's almost like you'd fill up a cup of milk. There were no rocks to be seen over there, just the very biggest rocks you see, but nothing over there. This whole, this whole zone down here. Back in the early 90s, I was training on the Horseman Glacier pretty much every day, all summer long. And I always used to stash my backpack behind this, this rock over on kind of the, the side of our ski lane. And for the first few years, you know, I'd just ski up, grab my pack, take off for the day. And then one year I noticed that we couldn't ski to the rock anymore. And then a couple years later, you know, it was a, a 10 or 15 foot walk up into the rock. And then a few years after that, the rock was 30 meters up the slope. At around that same time, this thing called global warming was starting to be talked about more and more in the news. And, you know, I, I kind of put two and two together and, and I was like, you know, th this concept, this idea of this huge global problem wasn't abstract to me at all at that point. It was real and it was happening right in front of my eyes. The, the point of taking Sam up there to show him the glacier wasn't to scare him, but I wanted to show him how climate change is affecting our own backyard. You know, I, I think a lot of people look at climate change is this massive problem that's, that's kind of overwhelming to even think about. But if you can break it down and see how it's affecting where you live and it becomes tangible, I think 
that makes people more willing to try and do something about it. Well, that's all for this episode of Snow Motion. Thanks for watching and make sure to tune in next time for the latest winter sports action. Until then, I'm Brenda Buglione and we'll see you on the slopes.